he put his gun back. Then he was like, great. In fact, we have been instructed that if we get any of you, we take very good care of you. Then he said, can you walk and come to me? Then I was like, look at my feet. It's like they're all rotten. Then he was like, okay, I'll carry you. So he come. He carries me on his back. Then we move like something like 20 meters. Then we found very many soldiers there, mobile troops. So they put me down and their commander looks at me. Then he asked me, do you know where you are? Then I told him, I don't know where I am. I don't know which day it is. Then they laugh. Then they tell me, but just bear with us. Consider yourself already safe. You are going back home. So just those words, I became satisfied. I needed food no more. So when those ones came, of course, looking at my feet, they made a stretcher. They carried me for 10 good miles. And if I were to move all that distance by myself, I think I would have been dead. I wouldn't have reached the main road. Then we met an LC, that is a local area council, a system of administration down there. He was in the bush cutting firewood. On seeing us, first he took off, thinking we were the rebels. But when they stopped him, they told him, now what you do, you carry this young man, take him to the military detach. We will carry your firewood. You'll get it with us the next day. So the LC carried me on his bicycle, took me to the military detach that is at Pabo. So on reaching there, they gave me a lot of food, beans and posh. Then after two days, they tell me we are taking you to the town so that you get proper medical care and they take you home. It happened that our seminary happened to be along that route. So I saw the seminary, the gate was closed and I was like, oh, finally I'm home. And our home happened to be also along that very route to the town. So as we passed by, I saw my dad, may his soul rest in peace. He passed away last year, November. He was seated in front of our house. I waved at him, but he, he couldn't see. So they took us to the reception center. They looked at us, of course. A woman who happened to be passing around, I knew her. So I talked to her. She knew my mom. So she made them aware. So my parents, my mom came, my brothers, they were very happy. They were crying. Actually, my mom just carried me, just like a baby, something like that. So the next day, our rector, that is Monsignor Matthew Dom, came and took me. First, we passed by and saw our Archbishop, His Grace John Baptist Todama. He prayed for me, blessed me. Then our rector took me to the hospital, that is St. Mary's Hospital, La Chau. So... Looking at my feet, I was admitted. I stayed there for two weeks. And I, have a, I had pictures really, but this is the one that I got. As you can see, this is myself on my hospital bed. And this is my, I could say, my best friend. He's called Cosmas. And this one, a colleague, they came to see me. So you can see what, this, what actually I went through and how I was. I look so different. When I came back, I thought I was the first to escape. But I found out that some other people had come before me because they would come to visit me in the hospital. And I was like, so you are here? I thought maybe you are still there. Then they would, of course, they would tell me how they got away, all this and that. So I stayed in the hospital for two weeks. I came back home. After some time, I went to the seminary and prayed with them. I found they had placed our pictures at the altar with our names. So the picture that they got was a picture which I had taken like a year ago with the Archbishop. So that's the picture they had placed on the altar. So when you come back, they take that picture away. So I prayed with them, but my parents, my family members and other people, they were very hesitant when I showed the desire to go back to the seminar again after all that. 
at a certain moment, I went back to the seminary just to say goodbye. But some of the ongoing students and some who had been abducted and returned and went back to the seminary were asking me, Stephen, you look fine. You have grown fat again. They were making fun because I was very thin. And why don't you come back to school and you are missing a lot. The teachers have begun. So why don't you just come back to school? Then our vice rector, by then known as Father Cyprian Chen, found me in the compound. Then he greeted me. He was our school football coach. So I happened to be a good footballer and still I am. So it was like, hey, Stephen, you're fine. Maybe when are you coming back so that we start playing soccer again? Then I was like, yeah, I'll be coming back. Then as I was about to go, then he told me something. That I know people are advising you to go to some other school like in the city where you think it's much safer and maybe people are hesitant. It's as if, the way he talked, it's as if he knew exactly what was going on. Our vice rector told me, well, you can go ahead, change school. But one piece of advice is that know that there are problems everywhere in this world. You might think that's a safe place, but it's never going to be 100%. So when I came on, that thing kept on ringing in my mind. So I thought maybe instead of going elsewhere and opening another chapter of problems, maybe let me carry on with this one, which I've already started and suffered. So somehow that piece of advice was a motivating factor. So I got back to the seminar, and here I am. Of course, I experienced certain things like nightmares. At times, I could be sleeping. All my dreams were just packed with things of the bush, some of the horrible scenes, the things that happened. At times, I, I could just see things at times. But of course, we had a peace club. Something called Peace Club was started by Justice and Peace Commission. So they would like do involve us in activities, drawing, drama, music, and dance. And our the patron of our club would like cancel us. So they elected me the vice chairperson of that club. So I think that played a very big role in bringing me back to what I could say a normal life. I went back to La Chose Seminary, finished my O level, A level. Then I was admitted to St. Thomas Aquinas National Major Seminary Katigondo in Masaka District in Uganda. I finished it, I would say, very successfully because I'm happy with what I did there. The recommendations, the results were fine. I finished my pastoral spiritual here. Next month, 2nd September, I'll be going for my theological studies at St. Mary's National Major Seminary Gaba in Kampala. And it's my prayer and a request to all who can pray for me that by God's grace I become a priest. On the 11th of May, every year, at Sacred Heart Minor Seminary La Cho, the rector, Monsignor Matthew Don, has made it a tradition that there is a big prayer held in remembrance of the incident that happened that very night on the 11th of May 2003 when we were abducted. And the prayer that our rector came up with is that this prayer, he made it specifically for the 11 seminarians that are missing up to now, up to date, and we don't know whether they are alive or dead, but I don't know. The kind of life I see there only God knows. But by human power alone, you can't guarantee that they are all alive. But with God, everything is possible. And it's our prayer that they are alive and they come back home. So the prayer that the rector came up with is, we entrust you to the, prote to the protection and loving care of Jesus Christ, who had called you to become priest and to proclaim the love and mercy of God in the world. We love you, dear seminarians. May God protect you and bring you safely home. 
our prayers are always with you.